All right, now, and bear with me, because in a few minutes I'm going to tell you how you can make your account multi-generational, whether it is or not, okay? But I want to explain what the multi-generational treatment looks like. Okay, so now, let's talk about a 250,000 IRA account, and it's multi-generational. So the way this works, I die, and I'm 70 and a half years old when I die. What's the significance of that? RMDs, right? You gotta take an RMD at 70 and a half. Goes back to your question. The IRS requires us to take out money that's never been taxed because they want us to pay tax on it. Otherwise, they would never pass that rule at all. Okay, so I'm 70 and a half, and if I'm alive, I have to take an IRA distribution from my 250,000, but I've died exactly at 70 and a half. And now Josh, who is age 45 at the time, okay, he's inheriting that IRA, and because of the way the tables work, it's based on his life expectancy, not mine. So folks, our beneficiaries still have to take an RMD, required minimum distribution, even though they're way under 70 and a half, because I was 70 and a half when I died. So Josh, the first year, has to take an RMD on 250, and it's $6,631. That's his RMD the first year. That's as opposed to 50,000 a year if I take it over five years, or 250 if they make me take it in one lump sum. So now, on top of my other earnings, I'm adding 6631 and paying tax on it. It's still taxable, but it's a lot lower of a number. I can't hear you. I'm okay, I'm sorry, I still can't. Okay, I'm just talking about you know how this would work if he had to take the distribution. I'm not talking about alternate investments or anything like that right now. Okay, now, Josh is 45, and he's got to take RMDs, and let's just fast forward to age 65. And so the question is, over that 20 year period of time, how much did Josh take out in RMDs? And the answer is $265,000. Hold on, Gary, how can he get 265? The account started at 250. The answer is the money he's not pulling out continues to be invested. And before somebody raises their hand and says, what's the rate of return you're assuming? I'm assuming a 6% rate of return. You can get that. In fact, most of your advisors would just about guarantee, oh, I can get you 6%, okay? Doesn't matter if it's 5% or 4.5 or 6.5. The point is, in this case, at six, he takes 265 in RMDs. But that's not the best news in all this. He still has a balance in this account of 378,000. Multi-generational, because now Josh is 65 years old, okay, and because the account is multi-generational, he's only taking based on his life expectancy Okay, by the way, our beneficiaries can take more, but they have to at least take the RMD amount. And now at age 65, he's got an account that I left him that he's pulled out 265,000 on, and it still has 378 in, which he can use for his retirement. And when he's done, it goes to his child, who is my granddaughter, Morgan. Okay, I like that. That sounds really good. Now, I think you can see that that's way better than having an account that's not multi-generational. That's why this is so important. Now, let's assume Josh is doing great. Josh doesn't need my money. God, it should only be, okay? <laughs> All right. But he's doing great, and when I die, he has a 19-year-old daughter, let's say 18, okay? Morgan's only 16 months, but let's say she's 18. Josh says, I don't need this. I don't need to take anything out of it. So now we're gonna pay this to my granddaughter, Morgan, 
who's 18 years old. And the question is, still a $250,000 account, how much does Morgan take out in her RMD because this is multi-generational the first year? Answer, $3,912, even less than what her daddy had to take out, right? Because he's 27 years older than she is. So I'm going to fast forward from Morgan down to her reaching age 65. I think you guys know where I'm going with this. And the question is, what did Morgan take out in RMDs from age 18 to age 65? I actually had a guy two workshops ago, and he knew almost the exact amount. I was so shocked because he had run it for his own family. It was just, it was ironic. But Morgan has taken a million four thousand in RMDs. A million four, starting with a two hundred fifty thousand dollar account. But that's not the best news. How much is the balance in this account for Morgan? A million twenty thousand. Sounds too good to be true. Anybody that likes numbers and actuarial charts and whatnot, I have it right here based on a 6% rate of return. So it's pretty obvious that multi-generational treatment is significantly better in terms of your beneficiaries. And again, folks, I don't care son, daughter, niece, nephew, if you leave it to five people as opposed to one, I'm just demonstrating the power of this and how much different it is than having an account that's not multi-generational, that maybe your advisors aren't talking with you about because their company doesn't, doesn't offer that. Yes, ma'am. What if you have to have an IRA annuity? Okay. How does that affect just being an IRA annuity? Hold that question. I'm going to talk about that later on. Oh, okay. I promise. And if I don't, yell at me or come up afterwards, and we'll spend okay. as much time as we have to. Okay? So now I want to talk about, let's assume you have an account with one of the major brokerage houses and you love it and you don't want to make any changes and by the way that's fine my job is to educate your job is to decide what you want to do with that information okay so there's two ways to make an account multi-generational if it's not multi-generational the first one you hire an attorney and by the way, for purposes of this conversation, I'm taking my lawyer's hat off, so I don't want anybody to think that I'm encouraging this. I actually have never drafted one of these, but you hire a lawyer and they prepare what's called a customized beneficiary IRA trust. And they charge you somewhere in the range of two to $3,000 to draft that trust for you. And what happens then is, by drafting your own trust, you can take an account that's with this one or that one or the other one that's not multi-generational, and you can make it multi-generational. Okay? So it costs you two to three thousand. You also have to hire a third-party administrator and they do the calculation annually of the RMDs and make sure you're taking what you need to take because again, remember, if you don't take your RMD, 50% penalty. Okay, it's a big deal. One of the reasons why a lot of the brokerage houses don't want to have to do these calculations. Okay, your third party administrator charges between a half and 1% per year of the value of the IRA, so if it's a $250,000 IRA, you're looking at another $1,000 to $2,500 fee, okay? And you've just heard the first way that you can make an account multi-generational. No, it's a separate, you've got to do a, so the question is, is that something that's inside a regular trust? I'm assuming you're talking about a revocable living trust? Okay, the answer is no. It has to be a completely separate trust whose sole function is to hold the IRA account. Anybody in here have one of these? Once in a while, oh, don't be shy, it's okay. 
I do run into people from, from time to time that have one of these, okay? But it puts the burden on you, on your trustee, and on your TPA to make sure you're in compliance, okay?